Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Tomer, Chief Product Officer at the SDF. And today, we're going to talk about privacy. In traditional finance, privacy is a given. Our paychecks, paychecks, our sensitive medical bills, and our trading activity, everything is completely private. The centralized ledgers of traditional finance keep data private, but it comes at a cost of openness and neutrality. So this is not true on blockchains like Block, on blockchains like Stellar, where everything is uh, public and transparent. That transparency is what makes Stellar secure, accessible, and trusted by enterprises and consumers alike. Now, this was acceptable for early adopters, but it's not great for mass adoption. And so we need to combine the openness and um, we need to combine the openness of blockchains with the privacy people come to expect from everyday financial services. So privacy is our next big opportunity. But we're not quite there. So we're seeing a lot of public chains adding confidentiality features. We're seeing banks testing permission networks. Uh, we're seeing uh, giants like Google launching private chains. But all this development activity um, and all these announcements haven't really translated into adoption. So the real test is whether we can, um, whether we can build solutions that balance the need of consumers and enterprises with the compliance we need to achieve adoption at scale. Enterprises and institutions are already moving billions of dollars on Stellar. They're doing this for payroll, institutional trading, B2B, and much more. And new institutions are exploring blockchains to bring new use cases that belong on-chain every day. These institutions rely on networks, uh, rely on our network's openness for security, security, accessibility, and trust. But they can't afford to expose every cash flow, every balance, and every counterparty relationship to the entire world. Stellar is best positioned to show that with the right ecosystem, the right technology, and the right approach, privacy and openness can coexist. So what is our strategy actually looking like? Our privacy strategy is guided by three core principles. First of all, the blockchain should be open and transparent by default. Transparency allows for accountability, verifiability, auditability. Stellar excels at these, product, at these properties, and we're not giving that up. So privacy on Stellar should be opt-in and configurable. There are many permutations of privacy, and we don't want to enshrine one specific version of that. And so on Stellar, privacy will be opt-in and configurable at the application level. We want builders to have the flexibility to innovate and to apply privacy when it, when it matters and where it matters. And lastly, privacy should be compliance ready. So any adoption scale at scale by regulated financial institutions will have to require safeguards. What does compliance look like on a blockchain? That's still an unanswered question. But it's very clear that in order to get that compliance, we need to build in administrative tools from the ground up to help answer the question. OK, so we believe these three core principles are the blueprint for privacy at scale on a blockchain on Stellar. So what does this translate to? What are we actually doing? We're working internally at SDF and with the ecosystem, with the Stellar ecosystem, on three work streams that will lay the foundation for long-term strategy. These are supporting innovation, investing in infrastructure, and also building open source solutions. Let's dive into each of these. SDF has, uh, SDF has and continues to support innovation. And we're putting an emphasis on privacy right now. We're doing this through our academic grants program. We're backing ecosystem builders through the Stellar Community Fund. And we're also forming strategic partnerships with teams that are building privacy solutions and teams that are looking to use these solutions. A few examples of projects that were recently funded by the Stellar Community Fund. Moonlight is a UTXO-based system that allows uh, private payments by dividing up large payments into uh, much smaller transactions. Uh, Human Tech provides uh, an identity layer on Stellar that utilizes ZK proofs, uh, and it allows people to prove that they're real without actually sharing any personal information. Amon Privacy is a privacy pools uh, project on Stellar 
It utilizes ZK proofs to disassociate depositors from uh, withdrawals. Now, if you're building in a space, you should really apply to the Stellar Community Fund. I'm obviously biased, but I honestly think that Stellar, the Stellar Community Fund is the best grants program in crypto. Check it out. Now, we also want to make sure that these builders have the right building blocks for privacy. So we're investing heavily in infrastructure. Our goal is to ensure that Stellar is the friendliest network for developers to build privacy on. Right now, this is, focus, uh, this is focusing on zero-knowledge cryptography, or ZK. But as other solutions mature, we're going to add support for these as well. So for ZK, first of all, we're making uh, ZK DSLs, or domain-specific languages, available for Stellar. Uh, this includes CIRCOM, which is by far the most popular ZK DSL today. But we're also introducing support for Noirlang through an RFP we published with Aztec earlier this year. We're also bullish on ZK VMs, Zero Knowledge Virtual Machines. These allow developers to write ZK apps in normal programming languages like Rust. It makes ZK super accessible. We're starting with bringing the Risk Zero ZK VM to Stellar. Risk Zero is a leading ZK VM with a thriving ecosystem, and we're bringing them to Stellar with the help of Boundless and Nethermind, two companies that we're very proud to partner with. Um, Nethermind and Boundless are actually going to talk about this project tomorrow at the Ipanema stage. I highly recommend checking it out. And finally, on a protocol level, we're already, we already have support for ZK, and we're adding or increasing the repertoire of crypto primitives with things like the BN254 elliptic curve, which will help bring uh, Ethereum native ZK applications, um, things like Poseidon hash functions, which are ZK friendly, bulletproofs, and much more. These discussions are already happening on GitHub right now. Um, so feel free to jump in, and this will be the focus of our next big uh, protocol upgrade. But we're not just building infrastructure. We're also directly contributing to open source tools and privacy protocols and standards that are informed by industry leaders and ongoing conversations with relevant stakeholders. So on the standards front, uh, we recently uh, joined the Confidential Token Association, and together with Open Zeppelin, Inco, and Zama, we're defining the standard for confidential tokens. These collaborations ensure that what we build is not only robust, but also interoperable. But we're not just defining standards. We're also directly working on concrete implementations. At SDF, we're building a confidential token uh, implementation, and together with Nethermind, we're working towards an identity-preserving private payments protocol. So we're starting with confidential token implementation. This allows users to hide their balances and their uh, transfer amounts while still making these available to a third party auditor, be it uh, the asset issuer or some other trusted party. It also allows for selective disclosure, which means that users can share information uh, with specific parties on demand. And we already have a working prototype of this. Uh, Jay from our core team is going to be demonstrating, demonstrating this uh, also at the Ipanema stage tomorrow. I highly recommend checking it out. Confidential payments are really great <clears throat> for a variety of use cases. Payroll, B2B, merchant payments, and much more. But what if you do not want to disclose transacting parties? That's where private payments come in. The private payments protocol that we're, pro that we're working on, again with Nethermind, not only hides the balances and transfer amounts, but also obfuscates senders and receivers. This means that you can do things like paying sensitive medical bills without worrying about that information becoming public. In addition, the private payments protocol allows administrators to set up association sets or disassociation sets. This means uh, this can help with reducing illicit activity. So uh, Nick from Nethermind is here and is going to give a talk again on the Ipanema stage as part of the ZK and privacy session tomorrow um, on this project. I'm really excited to be working uh, with Nethermind on all these projects. Uh, Nethermind are bringing a lot of blockchain and ZK experience to the table into the Stellar ecosystem. And payments are just the beginning. Uh, we're really excited to see how we can use the same technology to unlock other use cases like private trading and more. So what now? The foundation we're laying is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many opportunities for innovation and privacy. You can iterate on the privacy protocols that I talked about. 
you can build complementary interfaces and administrative tools to help productize these protocols. You can explore new frontiers of privacy tech, like FHE, for example, um, fully homomorphic encryption, which is, is becoming more and more popular. You can even operate your own pool as a regulated financial institution. So there has never been a better time to build privacy on a blockchain. We're seeing that the regulatory environment is favorable. We're seeing more people coming on chain and the tech is here. So privacy and openness can coexist and they will on Stellar. Thank you so much. Yeah,